Hi, Tom from BKNutrition.com and in this video we're going to talk about rest days and more importantly are rest days important for building muscle. Now if you follow me, follow my content then you probably are interested in building muscle, whether it's for strength gain, whether it's for a pure bodybuilding aspect, or whether it's just recreational to keep fit. Um, this video will be more relevant if you're looking to build a leaner muscular physique because I talk mainly about sort of bodybuilding and that sort of practices rather than say strength training. So rest days are, yes, of course, important for strength training, but I'm gonna be talking about as it pertains to the sort of bodybuilding training. That's volume training, multiple reps, multiple sets, um, you know, 10 to 12 reps, that sort of thing. So um, in this sort of 10 years I've been coaching, I've coached a lot of different type of clients. I've also been training since I was 17, so that's for 25 years. So I've learned a bit about what rest uh, uh, periods work, how much rest to take, and, and normally the hard way when to take a rest. And so the purpose of this video is to give you an idea about when you should rest, when you know you should rest, and if you do take some rest days, uh, what you should be doing on those, on those uh, days in order to maximize your, your recovery. Okay, so let's first of all talk about some of the mistakes that people make when they, uh, when they are training. Now, a lot of people I, I, I see training in the gym, especially say younger people who have just found the gym and they really wanna you know, maximize their gains when they're younger, generally what they do is they train too many times per week. So what they're doing is they're doing say five, six or seven days a week training even. Now, while I have uh, programs in my uh, in my one to one and my group stuff, which is five days a week training, normally where I see clients um, sit is around about four days a week. Three days a week is good; gives you adequate, you know, four days off. Four days gives you three days rest. Five days gives you two days rest. Now, it does depend on how uh, how your training is programmed. If you're trying to hit, say, strength maximums for all those five days, that's probably gonna get you injured quite quickly. Um, but for bodybuilding, four to five days is okay. Why I say that six or seven days is not okay is the fact that when people think about rest days or rest, what they're thinking of is, oh, I spend an hour in the gym and I go home and rest, and then I'm recovered for the next day. Well, that in principle might sound okay, it's not just the muscles that need to be rested because as well as the muscles contracting and lifting the weight and sometimes they get sore, which is called DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness, and they and potentially that stops you from training you know, for a few days. Um, the other thing you need to consider is your central nervous system. And your central nervous system is, is where all the electrical impulses happen. So it is it's involved massively in these big lifts that you're doing, involved in recovery and in transport of signals, and if you have done a really heavy session, your central nervous system will be taxed and that needs to be rested. Now, unfortunately, like, uh, not like muscles. So muscles, you'll get like a soreness, like the, the, uh, the, oh, I've trained really hard, so I probably shouldn't train my legs, you know, again the next day. So you give that body part a day off. Your central nervous system uh, deals with all the muscles and all the areas of your body. So if you have done, say, three or four days straight heavy training, what that means is, is that you've not given yourself a break, even though you've given maybe the muscles a break, so maybe you do chest on Monday, back on Tuesday, etc. Maybe you've given your muscle groups a break, but you haven't given your central nervous system a break. And this is why I recommend that people don't train more than, I would say maximum three days in a row. Now I do have some clients that are in shift work and they, they have say four days on, three days off, or that's or, or, or similar. And what they do is on their, on the days that they can train, normally that's sequentially, so they'll normally do four days in a row, but then they have three days off to, to recover. So that works for them because they are then scheduling three days in a row where they're, where they're resting. Most people don't do that. Most people will do four days, maybe have a rest, and then do another four days. So what you have to consider is that as well as your muscles getting tired and getting burnt out, you always have to think about your central nervous system. So that's the first key point to remember. And the thing is you won't feel your central nervous system getting depleted. The only um, the only signals you'll get from that is potentially you start to get ill or get injured or um, or get you know get really tired that sort of thing get burnt out uh, and then you do have to have like maybe three four maybe seven days a week or seven days in the week off to to recover. So if you do overload your central nervous system too much, what generally respond what results from that. Is, is a crash, like you know, you, you get bed bound for a few days. And that's not what we want. We want to have continuous improvement and continuous training to keep ourselves fit and healthy as well as building muscle. 
So first consideration there is make sure that your um, your training is not going for three days, um, more than three days sequentially, unless you have that plan for uh, four days and then like a three three day rest to recharge. Normally what people do, what most of my clients do, they'll do a Monday and Tuesday, then have a rest on a Wednesday, a Thursday and Friday, uh, and then have a rest on one of the and on the weekend day, say say like Saturday, and then they'll do something on Sunday. Of course, you, what you have to remember then is then you're coming into Monday, Tuesday the next day. So that's three days in a row. So essentially what they'll do is they'll have two days on, they um a day off, two days on, a day off, and then a day, and then they're back into the, the next week. So that'll be essentially three days sequentially. That's if you're doing five days a week. If you're doing four days a week, most people do Monday, Tuesday, have Wednesday off, they do Thursday, Friday, and then they have Saturday and Sunday off. And then that gives them a full two days to recover for the next day. I would say for the majority of people, four days weight training is enough. I've got uh, programs built for four uh, four day training and it works incredibly well with, with clients. In fact, the, the four day training split I've got is my most popular one inside, uh, inside my coaching. I do have a five day split, which is more technically geared towards sort of a higher level bodybuilders and advanced athletes. That works well, but you do have to have um, deloads after about four weeks. Otherwise, what you tend to get is that accumulated burnout. Even though you're having the rest, what happens is over time, because you're training so hard, um, you can't you can't restore everything maximally. Um, okay, so training frequency, that is something that people get wrong. And also training volume in the workout. I see a lot of people doing like two, two and a half hour workouts. And I just I just wonder to myself, what are they doing for those two and a half hours? Because when I go into a gym, my own gym to train, or any other gym I visit, you know, I do about an hour's hard training, and that's me pretty tapped out. You know, even even when I was doing bodybuilding training and for for competitions, and I was using like pre workouts and all the other stuff to to maximise my workout. You know, I'd be smashed after an hour and a half max. You know, um, in terms of weights, so I might do a bit of cardio after that, but I just can't understand why people would do two and a half hours of straight weights. I don't see how that's beneficial. The reason behind that, there is a bit of sort of um, research and sort of uh, technical stuff behind that, is that when you start training with weights, you release both growth hormone and testosterone and cortisol um, while you train. Now, after about 45 minutes, those levels of testosterone and growth hormone have, have started to go down, but the cortisol levels will still, will still be uh, quite high. So after that time, I would say, I have to say about an hour, hour and 10 minutes, you're into more higher cortisol levels, which is higher stress levels and potential, you know, muscle, I don't want to scale, I say muscle wastage, but potentially that's where it is in terms of overtraining. So I always say to people, if they're going to train, get everything done within about an hour, hour and 10 minutes maximum, and then make sure you get out, rest, recover, get your nutrition in, you know, you make sure that you have some rest so your body, your body can downtime. Um, Two and a half hours is too long. I would say anything over an hour and a half waits is too long. And if your workouts are taking that amount of time, try downloading some of my vitamin T workouts um, from my from my website. It's BKM Nutrition forward slash vitamin T. If you go onto there, that'll give you an example of some of the workouts I actually use with my coaching clients. And that will give you an idea about how long a workout should be and what it should contain. Um, and the normal reason why people overrun is they're doing too many exercises for a body part or too many sets, too many reps. Now, too many exercises. When sometimes when I see people doing, say, chest, they'll like throwing five or six exercises for chest to hit it from every single angle in order to completely smash the body. This is a mistake. The reason why is let's think about, um, uh, and this is a, 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 a good analysis that uh, so one of my one of my friends uses. If you, if you think about a domino and a set of dominoes set up, if you were to, all you need to push that domino over is enough force to tip the first domino. If you were then, after the domino's gone and you were then trying to push even more, you wouldn't get more domino effect, but you would be expending more energy. Now imagine that domino requires not just a finger push, but you've got to really run at it and really push it. As soon as you've acquired, pushed the, the amount of force to get that domino over, you want to stop so that you can rest and recover. If you were to continue running with that domino, you wouldn't get any more effect, but you'd be more burnt out and more and more tired. You need more recovery time. And this is the premise we're talking about muscle building. 
You only need a certain amount of stimulus to the muscle in order to trigger the failure response and then to trigger muscle uh, adaption so you grow bigger. Continuing past that point is potentially wasting your energy because you've already triggered the muscle to adapt. You've already triggered it to get stronger and get bigger. So pushing it even further, actually what you're potentially doing is then, um, is then overloading the muscle too much and it can't recover. There was an interesting study done on this. Um, what they did is they gave uh, two groups. Uh, one group was like a, a decent bodybuilding workout and the other group was like a proper old school smash until you die type workout. And what they found was, is that the group who did the smash it till they die workout actually, compared, when compared to the other one, gained less um, muscle tissue. Now, the, the reason they postulated for that was that because these people had completely smashed their body, yeah, they triggered this adaption signal and this recovery signal, but because they'd really smashed their bodies, the recovery and the adaption was all spent, pretty much, on building them back up to where they were before. There wasn't anything left to then build more muscle tissue afterwards. Now, that's a very crude analogy, uh, and I'm, I'm sure if I was more science I could explain it better, but that's the way I explain it, which people understand. And, and it does follow. And if you look at one of the, the, the greatest um, Mr. Olympias, Lee Haney, his philosophy was always, always uh, and stimulate, don't annihilate. And, and although that was like in the, in, the, in the 80s, way back when, now it's been researched. And actually that does seem to follow that you only need to get, put that little bit of stimulus in in order to trigger that uh, muscle protein synthesis adaption or, and, and response and then need to stop and rest and recover. And, and to do that, you probably only need about, I would say, maximum three to four exercises. It depends on what you're doing. Um, some of my workouts have three exercises. Some have two, some have four, depending on what we're doing in that workout. But I would say doing anything more than four exercises per body part is overkill. I think that's too much. You're, you're not going to get any benefit from doing that if you've taken the muscles to failure, of course, because a lot of people don't do that. They just do something and then potter about and do something and potter about. And that's probably why they're in there for two and a half hours. So make sure you look at your training volume. And if you are doing more than four exercises per body part, and, and if you're doing four exercises per, per body part, three sets is probably enough for that. Warm up set, intermediate, and then to failure set. If you're doing three exercises, probably four sets is, is enough for that. Obviously, it depends on what you're doing, but as a rule of thumb. So don't do too much volume. So not don't do too much um, sessions. Don't do too much volume. Um, then we come back to, okay, that's a stimulus in the gym. What about outside the gym recovery? And this is the actual rest. So in terms of what we're doing, talking about the workouts, is that are we giving ourselves too much to recover from? So if we're doing that, we're not going to recover properly. Now, how do we think about how to, how to recover properly? And it, most people don't get enough sleep. Now, I know it's a bit of a cliche to talk about sleep because it's very in at the moment talking about sleep and mental health and all that sort of stuff. Now, yeah, I totally agree you everyone should get more sleep realistically i mean i'm I'm the father of a six year old um me getting more than six or seven hours sleep is is a luxury for me um and people with children will appreciate this you know suddenly you have long hours and sometimes you, you can't get a long sleep so i I aim for six hours if I can eight hours is a uh, yeah I think that's that's a that's a luxury that sometimes doesn't happen but six hours I'd say is the minimum but here's the other thing is that well you can get to sleep and let's say you have 10 hours sleep if that sleep is not productive if you've not entered REM sleep if you've not entered your your rest phase you won't recover properly and the the reason why people don't get into this is they don't prepare for sleep properly now i have done another video with a guy called danny wilson it's in my uh, video archive and it's all about sleep maximization and sleep health the main thing you can do to help this is to have um a sequence of events that the what I call anchor you to get into sleep. So if you have a habit or a sequence of things that you do, normally you have, people have one for their morning routine, they have one for their uh, bedtime routine, or, or they don't have one, which is why they have an issue. They have one for all these little routines they do in the day. And it's a sequence of events. So say for example, when you get up in the morning, you might get up, you might have a shower, you might get dressed, and then you have your breakfast. If you were to say, have your breakfast as soon as you got up, it would feel unusual because you weren't doing things in the right order. And then your body's not prepared for oh, what's happened next, what are we doing? So what you want to do is get a, is, is get a, a sleep sequence in. So, so for example, for me, I don't have any, um, any phone after a certain time. 
I brush my teeth, I have a, uh, a shower, uh, I do a few more things to relax myself. Um, and all these things are, are done sequentially in the same order so that my body knows that if I start this sequence off and I'm doing it in this order, it goes, ah, right, we're going to sleep. And mentally, that prepares your body and your mind for sleep. So that as soon as you get into bed and, you've, and, you're, and your head hits the pillow, bang, you're out and then sleeping. And, uh, and and my girlfriend always says, how do you get to sleep so quickly? And it's because I have this sequence of events. I don't watch TV in bed. I don't um, use my phone in bed because it, it, it creates a system of, well, what am I doing in bed? Am I sleeping? Am I, am I on my phone? Am I watching TV? Am I reading? So I don't do any of that in bed. In bed for me is just sleep and the other thing. And and that means that your body is very clear about what you're doing when you're getting into bed. You're either sleeping or the other thing. And um, and so if, you're, if your head goes down and you, and you close your eyes, it's obviously sleep. So if you can get that sequence set up where you've got this, right, I know what I'm doing and I can get to sleep fast, you will enter that uh, recovery and, and REM sleep faster. So you will actually um, re recover faster. So that's the first. Make sure, you're, make sure you're thinking about your sleep. Then we're talking about the adequate nutrition you need for recovery. So as well as having our days off, we want to make sure we are adequately recovering um, because that is part of, of resting. So most people don't eat enough protein. Uh, most people don't eat enough carbs, what they're trying to do. Whenever I talk to people who are trying to get as big as possible or trying to build as much muscle and lose some body fat, generally they're not eating enough protein. The, the amount of protein you want to have is around about 2 grams per kilo. Now, I know that research says that 1.6 is enough to stimulate muscle protein synthesis and anything over 2.2 is, is wasted. But personally, with me, my clients, over 10 years experience, over 17 years bodybuilding, I found that higher protein does tend to work better for adequate recovery. And the reason why is that protein is not just used for muscle building. Protein is used for muscle building, yes, but also uh, production of peptides, such as growth hormone, it's in IGF-1. It's also used for enzyme production in the body, and it's also used for immune function as well. So if we're not providing ourselves with adequate protein for the demands placed on it, and remember, if you're training hard, you will be placing more demands on the immune system, on the enzymes, on the peptide production to, to help you recover from that. If you're not providing adequate protein for that, you're a less efficient machine. Now, this is purely, it's, it's not been proven. It's not been something I can dig out a research study and say, yeah, this proves it. But if you look at higher protein studies where they've gone past the sort of 2.2, the, the overwhelming thing you see there is an improvement in body composition from the higher protein studies. So, and providing you haven't got any kidney issues, which is going to obviously um, have an issue with the, with the protein di digestion and filtration. If your kidneys are okay, it's absolutely fine to go higher protein. And you look at all these studies, people have done higher protein, they generally end up with better body composition. What that means is they have more protein in relation to their body fat. Now, there's enough of those studies to think it can't be a fluke. It, it must be something which is proven. Uh, people don't really understand why that is, but it is the case. So if you're looking to, to get leaner and build more muscle, you need to have a high protein intake. So that's the first thing. Make sure your protein intake is at least two grams per kilo. Then look at carb intake. Most people, and there's this thing about the, at the moment, most people I work with are not eating enough carbs. Now, that's obviously not the case if you're massively overweight and trying to lose body fat because um, they might be eating too many carbs. Um, but, and ironically, those people still don't eat enough protein. But if, say, we're in a, in a reasonable uh, body composition and we're looking to improve on that, um, most people are, are afraid of carbs. They shy away from carbs because they're worried about getting fat because of too many carbs. What they don't do, they don't schedule their carbs around their workouts. And they don't give their body the, the opportune energy to make sure they are um, to make sure they're lifting properly and getting that, that energy into, into where it needs to be, channeling it towards their workouts. Um, and it, it is entirely possible to maximize your workouts and still be in a calorie deficit and lose body fat. So you can do this. You can have adequate protein, adequate carbs, and be in a calorie deficit as long as you are factoring your carbs and protein stuff around your workouts to optimize your recovery. So a, as a guide, three to four grams per kilo uh, of, of carbs is about where... Where, where most people normally sit. Uh, this will vary from, from person to person, of course, but that's generally where I find it sits. 
Make sure you're getting carbs. I would say a little bit of carbs pre-workout. That seems to work really well for people I work with. Uh, and it's also been sort of shown in studies to be beneficial. Um, if you want to have carbs post-workout, that's good as well. But it's not as important, I would say, as having it pre-workout. Because you're going to have carbs through the day after you're training, unless you're training last thing at night, of course. You will restore your glycogen over the course of, the, say, 24 hours when you come around to train again. So you don't need to get all those carbs in straight away to restore your glycogen. That's that's a bit of a myth around sort of the anabolic window from bodybuilding. So as long as you're eating decent carbs through the day, you will restore your glycogen. But if you want to have them post-workout, absolutely fine. Do that as well. It helps the recovery. It helps the process. Okay, so let's talk about um, supplements potentially. Now, supplements is going to be another video in itself probably. But as a rule, there are certain supplements I take which will help me recover, rest, help with inflammation, help with adaption. Uh, the main ones are ZMA I use, which is zinc, magnesium, and B6. It's a, it's a painted formulation. I have that before bed. I feel it helps me recover, but the research behind it is not conclusive. In fact, it's, it's pretty poor, actually. But I know that if I have ZMA before bed, I tend to recover faster. And I have better dreams. Um, so for me, it works, and I recommend it to my clients. It's, it's potentially not going to cause any harm you'd have to take an overdose of it if it's called any harm and, and mainly the, the the effects you get a nausea if you take too much um, zma is pre-dosed so maximum 30 milligram of zinc for men 25 for women and the magnesium i think is about 200 milligram i'm not quite sure what the b6 is but generally it's just it's a small amount have it before bed helps with recovery i feel it helps me get into rem sleep faster and it helps with me, me helps me get better dreams so Zenime, that's the first one. And it's cheap as well, really cheap. Uh, fish oils and krill oil, I find brilliant for um, for recovery. Um, there is some evidence around fish oils for anti-inflammatory action. Um, generally, the reason I take fish oils is just the overall health aspect of it, helping with the heart, um, helping with body composition, you know, all those other things. Um, fish oils and krill oil is something I, I, I really, I really, um, really would recommend to most people. Vitamin D3, um, I would say if you live in the UK like I do, um, you're not getting enough sun to be able to produce d vitamin D3 naturally. Um, so vitamin D3, 5,000 I use a day, should cover all your issues there. Um, and obviously, if you work out in the sun all the time and you're always getting sun and you probably don't need vitamin D3, um, but for, for most people I work with, work with offices, that sort of thing, vitamin D3, 4,000 to 5,000 IU a day is perfect for this. Um, and then we have uh, vitamin C and vitamin E, which are natural antioxidants. Just a note here is don't take your natural antioxidants around your workout because some studies have shown that it would um, reduce the adaption you get, as in you train and then you adapt and you grow. Um, because vitamin C and vitamin E and other antioxidants are really good at reducing the, uh, the free radicals, which cause the adaption, um, you're potentially limiting yourself there. So vitamin C, vitamin E, all antioxidants away from workouts and put those, say, either in the morning, first thing with your breakfast or uh, in the evening. And just have it, obviously, if you train straight after breakfast, not the best time, but you get the idea. Um, and the other one I, I use as well is uh, glutathione or glutathione, if you want to pronounce it that way. Um, it's a super antioxidant. It helps me, I believe, it helps me with um, recovery, with my mood. Um, it has shown to help with um, with, with uh, cleaning out the liver as well. Although it's not a detox, I don't want to get into that. Um, but it, it does help, um, sort of help cleanse you. And oh, that's the wrong word, isn't it? Cleanse. Um, it just helps the liver. Let's leave it at that. I'm not going to talk about detoxing and all that sort of stuff. Um, glutathione. I use a supplement by uh, Strom Sports called Glutathione Max. It's really good. Mint and drink. It tastes like lemonade. Just drink it down. Um, I have that before I go to bed to help me again with my sleep and recovery or first thing when I get up in the morning. Okay. So if you've done all those things and you've got your... Um, you've got all those things in action, you should have a pretty good rest and recovery schedule. So you should have a couple of days a week where you're resting and you should have uh, all the things in your arsenal to help you recover um, from, um, from all the training. A few notable mentions, sometimes I use Epsom salts in a bath. I think that helps me. It's certainly nice to lie in a bath, isn't it? If you've had a particularly hard workout, it's nice to have that. Um, generally, if you have that before bed, you will I would say you'd have a better night's sleep. It does help me uh, get into a better night's sleep there, but any time is good. If you haven't got a bath, Epsom salts in your feet while you're sat on the sofa, really good. I recommend that. And it's not an old person thing, you know, it's not a foot spa thing, uh, although foot spas are good as well. But Epsom salts and a bit of hot water with your feet, absolutely banging. Okay, um, 
So I think I've talked about enough about that. Yeah, I've gone on for about 25 minutes, so sorry about that. A um, bit of a long video, but it's really important to make sure you are maximizing your recovery as well as maximizing your workouts. You know, if you've got good workouts and then we've got good recovery, we've got an A-plus physique. If we've got good workouts, bad recovery, not so much recovery going to be made there. If you've got bad workouts and good recovery, well, again, you're not going to build much there. So if we can optimize both, then we can get the, the physique that you really want. So I hope that was helpful. There are things around more about this topic which I could talk about, but it'd be an hour's worth of conversation and you'd probably switch off by then. So if there's something else you're interested in, you want me to talk about something else around this topic, please leave a comment below and I'll do another video on that. And as always, appreciate your time. Thanks for spending the time to listen to me or watch me. And um, please go and like, subscribe, all that other stuff, get my numbers up. It's all good for the metrics, isn't it? And uh, if there's someone who could benefit from this video, give them a, a share so that they can, they can also watch this. Um, anyway, thanks for your time. Appreciate you. I will see you on the next video. Bye for now.